Last week, I had the pleasure to sit down and chat with Greg Fisher, the general manager for Granite Peak. Greg joined Granite Peak about a year ago and has done a wonderful job cementing Granite Peak as one of the top resorts in Wisconsin. We discussed their possible expansion, other off-season improvements, and much, much more. I'll drop some timestamps below if you want to skip around the video, but without further ado, let's dive right into it. Well, first off, Greg, uh, I mean, your first season at Granite Peak, like, just tell me how that went. I, I can tell you my thoughts on it, but I want to hear from you how you think your first season <laughs> at Granite Peak in Wisconsin, which is kind of a new element for you coming from the East Coast. And you were an Ohio boy uh, at one yeah. time managing at uh, Mad River Mountain. So back to the Midwest, how, how do you think it, it went and what did you learn so far? I thought it went well. You know, I, I thought it went great, actually. Um, you always, you know, it's always a little nerve wracking going into your first your first season at any any position, whether it's in marketing or a new resort or general manager. I think um, for this time around as my second stint of being a GM, I think I felt a little bit more comfortable in, in my knowledge base. My first mm -hmm. time around, I was a, like a green as green could be in terms of operation, a ski resort. And um, definitely coming to the Midwest for the first time from the East Coast was a little culture shock, but um, but a good one. Um, you know, this this time around, definitely know of a little bit more of like the day to day of of a Midwest ski resort. Um, mm -hmm. It's nice to be at the biggest one of the uh, of the state and kind of one of the premier ones here in in the Midwest. And I feel like that last year we kind of showed um, we were we were a leader. I thought well, we did a good job of really taking COVID protocols to heart, um, making sure that, you know, people followed the rules and what we were putting out there, but also had a little fun with it. You know, our signage wasn't like, you need to do this or you need to do that. We kind of had fun with the graphics and, um, you know, that's that's kind of my marketing side of things is, is, you know, I want people to be safe. I want people to have, but I also want people to have fun. And there's a way that you can, you can message those things. So, Overall, I thought we did pretty good, and guests, I think, appreciated our, our, our tactics. Um, definitely was different with the historic lodge being a restaurant and the restrictions on Sundance, but everybody really played well. Um, you know, it would have been nice to go a little bit longer in terms of the ski season, but mm -hmm. Mother Nature kind of, she just put the brakes on us and, and you know, March was really warm, and and uh, I, when we decided to, to pull the plug, it really, like the next day it was like no we wouldn't have made it yeah. much further than that um so it was a good season i really enjoyed it um but i'm really looking forward to next season and and kind of being able to do what i like to do which is a lot of added value um you know i'm not somebody i'm not a, a captain can't um you know mm -hmm. you can't yep. do this you can't do that i don't really like saying no i like trying to have fun and and finding a lot of uh, value and, and added value events and um music and and other things at the resort so yeah i'm excited as well i mean i know last year was first of all just one of the craziest weirdest uh ever changing years in skiing history yeah. and i agree i think i thought you guys handled it well and it was like a moving target non-stop we didn't know what to expect coming in and then it moved a little bit in the middle um, we were always kind of slightly adjusting and it was all new to everybody, but I agree. I think you guys handled it probably one of the best of the resorts that I visited this season. The signage was really good. The messages was really clear. And from everyone I've talked to, it sounded like they felt safe throughout their entire time there. One question though, for so now that you moved to Wisconsin, do you put brandies in your old fashions now or what, what's the status on that? No, I'm a bourbon guy. Um, my my dad was a was a big old fashioned guy on on Long Island where I grew up. Um, he drank Manhattan's old fashions, and he was a Heavenly Hill bourbon guy. And okay. um, I think that I, I remember when I was a little kid, he would let me put my finger in his drink and get to. I think that maybe helped in my bourbon love. Um, my wife also took me on the bourbon trail for my 40th birthday, so nice. okay. um, I still stick to the bourbon. And then the other question I have for you is: so have you you guys found your your um, Friday? fish fry place or location yet no i, I can't oh, say come that. on dude you've been there a year <laughs> i know um we've been to a couple places that have some good fish fries and good fish in general i should I, we haven't really been to a fish fry you know um 
I, I'm a, I grew up on Long Island. I, I lived in New England, obviously, for 15 years. So we're shellfish people. Like, I grew okay. up eating clams and lobsters. And I'm actually headed back to New Hampshire and Maine for a, a vacation next week. And, okay. um, you know, anticipate having a little lobster while we're out there. But, uh, you know, some good places in town that I've had fish, the fish fry at. Like, Tide and Cellar's been really good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the guys at Granite Peak did a good job towards the end of the year. We added it on Friday nights and historic. Oscani's was pretty good okay, in, yeah. uh, in town, but haven't found the place. Um, <laughs> you know, we go out to dinner once a week. My wife and I, we kind of try new places all over the place. And we've, and we've been able to, to discover some really good food around here. So it's been fun. All right, cool. But you got to admit the beer is good in Wisconsin, right? Can beer you, is very good. To that. Um, I, I've enjoyed, you know, that's one thing where I'm still getting through everything. There's so many craft beer and breweries and not even, not just Wisconsin, but across the Midwest that you don't get where I've had, not had the experience of on the East Coast. And mm -hmm. um, they're all great, you know, it's it's fantastic and I love it, so. What a crazy year and like so many weird new things went on. Um, yeah. But I think there was something to be learned from last season. So what are you guys taking away from last season that you might be implementing this upcoming season? Oh, absolutely. You know, there's a couple things that are definitely going to stick around at Granite Peak. Um, first and foremost, I think for sure the bags in the lodges mm -hmm. and on tables and, and camping at tables is going to be a no-no uh, moving forward. And I think that that's going to, you're going to see that across the East Coast or across the country, really, not just mm -hmm. the East Coast and in the Midwest. It's it's really something that folks are, are going to take to heart. And I think a lot of people and even the guests will understand that. It gives you space. It provides a better environment in the lodges. Stuff isn't thrown everywhere. And and we're also really gonna try to do our best of not allowing people to kind of just have a table all day long. Mm -hmm. um, we realize that there are parents out there that come and they don't necessarily ski, but um, the turnover time is really important to allow people to eat, get inside, and, and we're gonna be monitoring that this year. Uh, we've changed up our, one of the things that we tried to do last year is we had a 30 minute timetable on, okay. on the tables and we were, we weren't vigilant about that, but when we saw people kind of finishing up their food, we would go over and help them. And it was kind of an encouraging, like if we could help, then they knew that, yeah, okay, we're done. We'll, we'll move on. Um, and I think we're going to continue that. And um, it's a good customer service, but it also helps us flip the tables and get people in. So I think that that will be something that we'll continue to do. And at Granite Peak, the, the parking lot is so close mm -hmm. to the slopes and to the lifts and the lodges that really asking folks to continue to put on their equipment out in the lot um, and leaving their bags and their personal property inside their cars is not a big ask. I think at some of the bigger resorts across this country, that is a little bit more of a taller task. But for us here, especially in the Midwest, I don't think it's that big of a deal. No, I agree. And I think uh, one of the things which obviously we'll talk a little bit more with the expansion and kind of that is uh, it's very clear that your guys' infrastructure as far as like off um, off the hill, like capacity seems to be a bottleneck for in some degree. Um, so kind of managing that as well with uh, with turning those tables over so more people can access that rather than having a, just a handful of people sit there the entire day. Um, yep. It's obviously a great way to, at least in the meantime, before any sort of major expansion or something like that, uh, at least give people more opportunity to, to utilize the space as well. Absolutely. And I think, too, we'll be looking at um, our peak days and, you know, uh, having sellouts. I think that that helped. You know, last year we sold mm -hmm. out at a certain number. That number will be a little bit higher this year um, because we could have more folks that were in our lodges, we we are working on cleaning up a third lot or fourth lot in which we have a lot of equipment in the summertime, but in the winter, um, that could be another parking area. So we're we're gonna have a limit on a you know a busy Saturday or holidays, and we're still gonna push that advanced lift ticket purchase process. People will save money, but it also helps us plan uh, better and, and accordingly. With a year of like so many challenges, what was the biggest challenge for you um, coming into a brand new role, brand new location, and on top of that, you have to deal with so many different strange things going on with uh, the pandemic. What would you say was one of the, the biggest challenges that you had uh, last season? Well, I think the weather was one. Um, you know, <laughs> really, we're lucky we have a really strong snowmaking system. Yep. And we have mm -hmm. a very talented team. So I felt that we did a good job of getting terrain open quickly and expanding quickly. Um, a little bit better than maybe some of our competitors. Um, but, you know, that was one thing, um, you know, just 
having to deal with the mask situation and people's opinions and differences on it, you know, it wasn't a problem, but it was, you know, you had days where you had some challenges with some individuals and, and you wanted to keep people safe and certain people had their own opinions on what was considered safe and what wasn't. So um, there were some challenges on some busy days where we would need to be a little bit more forceful than I would yeah. normally like to be. So I would say that that was the biggest challenge. It, it got it got easier as the season went on. I would say the first month of December, it was a learning curve for everybody. And um, I think our guests did a really good job of, of understanding it by the time MLK weekend rolled around. Um, so yeah. we got a good month in. Um, before really things kind of got smooth. It was a strange year. It was kind of like everyone was just trying to figure it out for the first time for the first like month. It was just nonstop, like just trying to figure things out. And then things got much more smoothly. So like when I visited, it was very smooth operation. You guys had things kind of nailed down at that point. Speaking of operations, what do you guys got going on for summer operations? I know a lot of my viewers and people think that ski resorts might just hit the pause button for a handful of months and then kind of restart. <laughs> um, and that's certainly not true. You and I both know that. Uh, so what have you guys been working on behind the scenes right now? Yeah, we actually, you know, a lot of people might think that the ski season is the more difficult time. I find the summer and the fall to be a lot more hands-on and a lot more like the ski season. Once we get rolling, that's kind of what we do. That's what we all know how to do. The off season is when you, you get into projects that are you know, big, big projects mm -hmm. that, that look to expand upon your offerings and also give guests a little bit more progress and, and promotion of the ski resort. So, you know, we have four major projects that are going on, I would say, at the, at the hill right now. Um, the biggest one is, is we are um, upgrading our snowmaking um, awesome. operations on the hill. We're kind of replacing, we have these things called water sticks um, mm -hmm. across the west and up in the east that um, really limit the temperature in which we can make snow. The dew point needs to be at a low, you know, low 20s. Mm -hmm. um, so we really can't light those up right away. Uh, so that limits us from an expansion standpoint. So we're replacing those with SMI Grizzlies, which are um, tower uh, snowmaking guns okay. that um, really, they have their own compressor on them. They make fantastic snow and the dew point is, is down around that 22 or is, is up around 26 to 27 degrees. Nice. So, um, you know, we always look at the West as kind of that, that event will get there um, later on. And now mm -hmm. this will allow us to potentially get there a little bit sooner. Um, we're gonna look at, at hopefully, you know, being our goal every year is always gonna be 100% by Christmas. And, and these upgrades are going to really help us. So we're looking at snowmaking guns going on Infinity, Western Frontier, uh, elk, slalom, okay. and then Idlewide over on the east side and Shadow Ridge, which is the very furthest east. So we have those, we're replacing some and upgrading some fan guns in the main part of the hill. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so overall, we and, and a bunch of snowmaking pipe to go along with it. Um, we're also doing some trail work, uh, especially in the west side, off the top of Dasher, Infinity and Western Frontier and Top Notch have these big boulders that are up at the top. And, and um, if you've hiked around and have seen it in the summertime, you would understand exactly how much snow it takes to cover, to cover the, everything, uh, yep. um, fill in the gaps, fill in the holes. And so we've been working with the DNR, uh, RAI and in, in, in getting all these permits in place to um, we're basically breaking the rock up and smoothing it out. Uh, top notch looks fantastic. It, mm. it, we kind of remove the double fall line. It provides a much easier sight line to get okay. from the top of Dasher over to trails like Panorama, Legends, and then down into um, White Lightning and eventually back over to, to Miracle and Birch. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and something that I noticed last year, it's a blue trail. Um, mm -hmm. But it does have a fall line that will tend to bring you down into Panorama and, and maybe a trail that, that I guess a, an intermediate would not want to go down if they didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, now we have a nice wide area and a good sight line for those guests that want to get back to the main hill. So, um, nice. so that's exciting. We are expanding our historic deck. Um, nice. okay. We're working, this is one that I'm really excited about. We're working with Revi Design or Revi, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it, 
which is a local designer here in town. Uh, they do landscape and have worked with the town of Schofield, the town of Wausau, and, and really have these very cool architectural features. So we have a bump out of 20 by 40 feet of the historic deck. Okay. Uh, we're going to add about 50 to 60 more seats out there. Wow, okay. And then we're adding all sorts of, we're, we're all new, t all new furniture. Um, we're adding three pergolas to the deck with heating elements and then four or five fire tables to it. So it's going nice. to be okay. um, not only from a, a expansion of seating, but a much better ambiance out there. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I think we've prided ourselves on all along is that we had a really nice outdoor facility already and Absolutely. it's going to get even better moving forward. Um, we have a stage out there for springtime so we can have uh, music on the deck in March, which we like to do. And um, I'm really looking forward to that project. And then inside Historic, we're, this isn't as flashy, but we're, we're replacing a boiler system with the yep. <laughs> eight heat system um, that will help with heating of the, of the facility, but really, it's the AC part of it that I'm mm -hmm. excited about um, because we haven't really been able to use that historic lodge, which is a really cool chalet um, in the in the summertime because the su the south facing sun kind of just beats those windows and it gets really hot in there. So we haven't been able to do weddings in the right now like July and August because of that. Um, so that'll open up that opportunity and maybe for some year round uh, restaurant um, as well. So well, that's yeah. another one. Uh, and then we're hoping to uh, expand upon our administration building. Really and not, not a super flashy one. Um, this is still in the permitting process. So I'm not sure where that's going to be, but we're hoping to expand upon it and um, allow for a new check-in area for ski school. Um, okay, perfect. It expands our guest services for a season pass and, and uh, guest services office. And it also just gives us a little bit more breathing room in there. Right now we have, you know, in the in the winter time, we can have 20 people with the ticketers and, and it's busy back there. And, and we only have one bathroom, so we're adding a bathroom. So again, that's not as flashy as the other two, um, yep. but uh, it, it, they're they're all big projects and, and the DNR, we've been working with them as well as local aid and, and permitting process. And it's been going pretty, pretty smoothly so far. The weather, knock on wood, has been working in our favor here. We've only had a couple of real heavy downpours but really for the most part it's been a dry summer so we've been able to kind of keep moving that all sounds great i'm excited about the patio i think one of the things i always think of like granite peak is like just sitting on that patio on a sunny day um there's i don't know there's something about that ambiance the the whole vibe of that area so i'm glad that that's going to get kind of refurbished uh get expanded a little bit uh, look a little bit nicer I, I just i like the idea of that i think it's it feeds into that like vibe of that area so much. oh it's gonna be great and like again you know the idea that we can utilize historic lodge historic chalet year round is is really the essence behind all of the work that we're doing up there yeah. that lodge is old you know it dates back to the 1940s and it just needs some tender love and care and um i'm excited about the deck i think it's really gonna wow a lot of people and i'm excited to to show it to to the guests um this this upcoming uh season so that's gonna be done in the in september kind of Unfortunately, right in the middle of our scenic chairlift rides, but I was going to really... say, is that going to be done for that? Okay. Yeah, be... it, we would hope to kind of get it done in August, but um, the way all the timing worked out and 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 getting the supplies has has been a, a challenge. Oh, yeah. Um, luckily, they're all coming in. With, the timing's going to be fine, so we're going to sneak it in into the middle of September to the end of October, and it'll be ready cool. for the ski season. So that'll be awesome. Okay, so let's obviously talk about the big news that you guys just released. Uh, I guess a week or so ago now at this point, uh, the idea of possibly having a expansion that can range from basically nothing to crazy amount of expansion introducing summer operations uh was one of the biggest expansions that i would go on the record and say probably in midwest skiing history uh really really would change the everything for granite peak let's talk about that and obviously you guys are pushing for alternative number four which would be the probably the most ambitious of all of the expansions uh, but what do you think this would do for the the ski resort granite peak and then also just the city of wausau how do you think it would impact them it's a huge opportunity this expansion has been in the discussion ever since charles skinner my boss and the owner and president of granite peak has um, has purchased the property. The idea behind when he purchased it was also to take that master plan. And, and it's, you know, this dates back to the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, this has been around for a long time. And Charles um, 
kudos to him is, is taking it and really has driven this to where it's at right now. You know, the Greater Wausau Prosperity Partnership is a is a group that is really um, wrapped around. It's it's a bunch of leaders of the area, of town officials that um, are behind a lot of things that are, are moving Wausau forward. And this is another project of theirs that they've taken on and they're kind of guiding it. Um, you know, we're just a piece of the puzzle of this DNR master plan that mm -hmm. they are looking into. Yeah, the ski resort has a lot of potential and a lot of projects, but so does the Rib Mountain State Park. You know, you look at the four options that are on the table and yeah, one has nothing really of value in my opinion, um, but all the other ones do. Um, they add, you know, especially three and four. They add, you know, 14 different access points for community members to hike and potentially bike on 15 multi-use trails mm -hmm. that yeah. are not right now um, available. You know, that to me is the biggest opportunity is looking at mountain biking. And I've been associated with mountain biking ever since I started my career. You know, just like skiing, mountain biking, it's important to have trails that people aren't intimidated by. Is skiing, one of the challenges is, is just getting that, that person on skis, getting them to enjoy the sport, and then having them come back. You know, you don't want to scare them that first time that they go out. Mountain biking is the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, you know, rugged downhillers, those bikes, they, they're thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, the equipment that goes into the helmet, the body armor, you know, it's, it's an investment, but you don't need to do all that to get into mountain biking. Trails with a 10% grade, um, they're fun. They're easy for, for people to, to get used to how the bike handles, cross country mm -hmm. trails. And that to me is what options three and four give you. They have multi-use trails. Yeah, there's five designated gravity trails, mm -hmm. but as we get into, you know, the process, if, if we, if the DNR decides this is the route that they want to go, we will work with, you know, IMBA and local um, mountain bike uh, groups to ensure that what we're building is fun for all, all guests, not just your hardcore downhillers. But, you know, this project, if it goes through, will really, uh, from a mountain biking standpoint, be looked at as something that we're going to take a long time and making sure we get it right the first time. And that's what's fun about this is that I think it, even option four, you look at mountain biking and it, it kind of is at the forefront of this option, mm -hmm. which I think ever since I got here, number one question that I get about off season <laughs> opportunities, is like, when are you gonna put mountain biking in? When are you gonna put mountain biking in? And, you know, I want to do it. I do. I really do. Um, but it takes time. You can't just throw a lift, you know, can't just throw bikes on a lift and say, have at it. You need to have designated trails and, and also maintain them, which is um, an important piece of the puzzle. Back from the skiing side of things, expanding to the west gives Granite Peak something that we currently don't have and, and it's something that I think is an Achilles heel for us and that's a top to bottom green trail. We have great learning terrain, we really do. Off the Blitz and Mid Station, we have in Santa, there's great green trails. Yep. But as somebody who is, you know, also come from a resort like Wildcat where we had a two and a half mile green trail from the top, being able to go to the top of the hill after you've gone through lessons and feel confident that you can get down a trail like that, it's like an uplifting thing. You know, you feel yeah. accomplished. And and that to me is like the most, the number one thing that, that really brings out options three and four is giving us those green trails, um, top to bottom runs. You know, the rest of it is, is, is really exciting too. I mean, there's, you know, a backside lift, you know, technically doesn't connect nine mile to Rib Mountain, but it comes pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, nine mile forest, for those of you who don't know, is, is about five miles away from Granite Peak. And it's this big plot of land that has um, amazing cross country mountain bike trails, um, as well as cross country ski trails. So that idea, and then in the wintertime running flat, fat tire bikes is, mm -hmm. is something that I haven't had an experience doing, um, but would very much like to get involved with for sure. I think like on the skiing side, I, I totally agree with you with uh, having that area, that beginner area on the side there. First of all, the groomable glade stuff sounds amazing. I've never heard of that. And uh, 
I, I kind of like the idea of that. I don't, I don't know why, but it's, um, it's cool. You know, it's unique. Actually, at, at Mad River, we had a a, a blade okay. that was roomable, and it's just oh, I, you know I know open. what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, yeah, we've been there. Um, yep. You know, it's this one area where you you you, want, you have it wide enough that a small maybe a a 200 can get mm -hmm. into. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe we get a a 100, and it's it's a little bit more narrow. I don't know, um, but. Uh, Again, it's like stepping stone. Yep. It's just like, you know, if you want to get into the trees, it's a big step. You're taking um, non-man-made objects and, and you have to avoid them um, mm -hmm. when you get into the trees. But that next step, if you want to get in there, you kind of get a little bit more comfortable and, and you can progress into a, a truly related area. So Yeah, um, that was really cool. And, and I agree, like having, because right now the, the biggest I think Achilles heel, like you mentioned, is you go from these lifts that have a pretty mild pitch and then you go up to take the six pack up and now you're looking at a, a, a face that is pretty steep for a beginner skier. It's very intimidating. Um, that's the only way to get down right now. So in order for you to really run the whole length, I mean, you got to be at least to the point of, I would say, an intermediate skier. And, and this would change that from that standpoint. You can you can ski the whole mountain and feel like you are actually participating in the sport rather than just attempting to learn the sport, which I think will be um, huge for Granite Peak. It also poses that, um, you know, if you have a green trail from the top and, and maybe, you know, say I'm a, I'm going with some friends who are beginners and, you know, you want to ski with your friends, mm -hmm. but you also, the time that you're really enjoying is on the lift with them. That's when you have the camaraderie side of things. I mean, skiing is an individual sport. But basically, you know, you're not talking as you're skiing down next to your buddy, rarely. Having been at resorts that have a green trail from the top, it does give that access to go on a long lift ride, get off on the top and say, hey, I'll see you at the bottom, you know, yeah. and you, you collect back up there. And that's one thing I, I will say that Granite Peak has is, is very easy avenues and direction you know you're always going to come down to pretty much the same left same, over and yeah. over again so so my first question is and i'm just going to be completely direct everybody wants mountain biking in the midwest i hear this like all the time lift access mountain biking but i can give you a handful of examples of ski resorts in the midwest that have done mountain biking and unfortunately it just didn't work out for them what are you guys going to do how are you going to attempt to do this in a way that's going to make you successful um, rather than be another failure that's going to be added to this list. Well, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's it's you got to really invest in the trail design. Mountain biking does trail design. It's expensive. It's amazing how much dirt costs to build these trails properly. And I think that the opportunity that is presented um, looks at mountain biking first mm -hmm. in in option four. It kind of looks at these two lifts as like, okay, these are designated mountain bike trail lifts. And off of these lifts are gonna be trails. And we're gonna take our time and make sure that we get it right um, in, in designing it so that it's not intimidating. It flows very well. And um, beginners, again, can feel confident that they can go out um, and also be fun for um, for your intermediate to advanced ski, uh, riders out there. And I think that that's really important that we take our time in this process. You know, we're, this isn't gonna happen overnight. This, you know, we're at the very beginning of a long process. And right now it's just about educating um, people out there that have questions about, about the, the, uh, the opportunities presented in the, in the study. Um, what do you think your biggest challenge is as you guys are working through this proposed expansion right now? I think education, I think people are going to, you know, kind of see these four different options and might just have their opinions immediately without really educating themselves on, uh, on it. And I think that, that is, uh, important that we we go through the process and make sure that people have read through the study. It's a big, long study, but if you read it, it, it was very meticulous. I mean, they mm -hmm. really dove into it. This is multi years in the making. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's one thing that is, is always a challenge. You know, if I send out an email, I've been in marketing for 20 years. I've known that people aren't going to read the email. They're going <laughs> to gravitate to the pictures and, and bullet points. And, and you want to, to give them as much info and, um, and cliff notes as possible, which is, you know, why I'm doing interviews like this with you and with media um, to try to get as much information out there as we can to to the greater um, the greater Wausau area, because this is how it's gonna affect um, 
those local community members. And, um, you know, I've spoken to neighbors mm -hmm. um, that live right at the bottom of Granite Peak about how this will affect them. Should they mm -hmm. expect um, tons and tons of cars infiltrating their neighborhoods? No, you know, we, we have parking plans in place. Um, you know, all of these things come along with different parking lots for different expansion opportunities. You know, will there be noise factors? Not really. I mean, mountain biking and skiing, they, they're not really noisy, neither are lifts. And, you know, some of the stuff that, there's a lot of favorite trails up at Rib Mountain. You know, Turkey Vulture, um, the quarry trail system that are over there. Um, and, and some trails will be realigned, others will mm -hmm. come back and be better. So I think that that, no one likes change. You know, I get that. And I've gone through a season with, um, with you know, changing the, where the terrain parks live right now and, and Historic Lodge. And it takes time, but at the end of the ski season, for me personally, it worked. And I think that I sold a few of our changes well to, mm -hmm. to our guests. And they might not have liked it right away, mm -hmm. but in the end, I think that they saw the vision. And I, that's what I ask, you know, people to do is, is see the vision and and understand that it, we we know that change is tough but we want to really give our community members our guests our season pass holders the best opportunities in the future and we're not gonna you know just go with a weed whacker out in a, in a chainsaw <laughs> and make trails all over the place you know we're we're taking the time to really think about what what's going to be best and and you know uh, also, different levels of, of um, difficulty too are fun. You know, hiking is, is a good time, but you sometimes you want to challenge yourself. You want to go up a really steep pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that that also incorporates into these plans. Now, this plan, there's a lot that has to happen um, for something like Alternative 4 to become a reality. Uh, what would be the time, a rough timetable for somebody to expect? Like, when is this all going to happen? When are we going to get mountain biking at Granite Peak? And obviously, will there be phases of this? Because I can't imagine just one season and everything just opens up. Yeah, no, I that for sure. You know, this is not a <laughs> one summer and wow, we got everything. No, it's it's definitely going to be a phased program. You know, I think at this point we're, we have the public comment period um, until the middle of July, July 14th. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then the DNR take all the comments and they kind of, I guess, you know, go over them and mm -hmm. see what they feel is the best move for the master plan. You know, this is a public comment period, but in the end, the Department of Natural Resources in the state of Wisconsin are gonna make the decision on which way to go. And public comments are important, but in the end, they, they have to decide on what's best for the park and best for, for their overall um, program. Hopefully by this winter, we would have an idea of where, where that vision is. And then you get into next summer, and, and that's when potentially things could start moving. You know, mm. it's a big multi-million dollar program. So all of this is money behind it. So yeah. um, I think the finances that need to be in place to start picking away at these things. You know, I, I can't really answer that question <laughs> for you. I wish I could. You know, I'm really in charge of the general manager and, and, and running the ski resort as it is right now. And mm. um, this is this project is 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 bigger than me, um, but I could see this in in phases like the Blitzen and the Santa lifts. Mm -hmm. Those would probably I would imagine would be one of the first things that we would do, and then you know maybe the eastern side happens first, and, and in in conjunction maybe some of the west. You know I think the west expansion would take multi years um, and would go in phases. You know there's there's stuff that you would want to do obviously you would want to have a connection between the areas themselves so um i think you're looking at the eastern side of the west yep. expansion yeah. coming first and then getting into that like that gladed you know trail system over there there would be steps and, and the timeline to that would probably be outlined after we find out exactly where we're going with this work. we're definitely at the very beginning it seems like of this uh very long journey but i mean it's a very important step because without this step nothing else can happen so is there anything else you want to add um about the expansion or anything else that's going on around the resort that you want to kind of talk about? No, I think, you know, for guests and, and folks that are really interested in, in the expansion, I've had a few folks that have called me up and say that they've gone through it on their phone. It's something that you really need to grab a beer or a drink 
<laughs> sit down at your computer for an, and give yourself an hour, you know, and go through the DNR, every study, the steps, read through it. You know, it's going to take you about an hour to get through everything and, and really understand it. And then, you know, and if you haven't made a comment or you haven't made your opinion be shared, then do it. You know, there's a lot of folks that are out there that are very supportive of, of options, you know, three and four. Um, and then there, there are folks that really want to see Red Mountain, that area kind of just preserved the way it is. And I like this democracy style, you know, of really going through this process. I think it's important, especially when you talk about, you know, a state park. And I think that we should look at all avenues and how this is going. And definitely, you know, for me, it's a big opportunity to expand upon the, the, the resort as a whole, draw more people to, to our, our great area around here um, and really start a year round business. And that's something that I think we need to do. Um, yeah. And I would like to do in the future. Um, I think Rib Mountain oh. and Granite Peak offer some really beautiful views of the area. And it's a resource that we should uh, continue to enjoy. And I've enjoyed it so far in one year being here. So. <laughs> um, now, before I let you go, I did take some questions from my viewers. So we'll just kind of go through these like rapid fire style. Uh, we touched on some of these. So if we did just give a quick answer and then we'll just keep going through. Fire away. Uh, can the expansion be done in phases? When would the earliest expansion would start? Uh, like I said, I, I don't know. I think it, it will definitely be done in phases when any kind of opportunity would present itself. I don't know if that's next summer or the following summer to, to put a <laughs> shovel on the ground. So um, just going to have to wait and see on that one. Are you going to bring back the Amish baked goods? I don't know what that means, but... I didn't know that we offered Amish baked goods, but I love Amish baked goods. So if whoever asked that question, if they could present what they're talking about to me, I'd, I'd totally look into it. Will beer prices increase with the new expansion? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, <laughs> I think we were really happy with the beer selection we had last year. Um, we really expanded upon it because like we were talking about earlier, you know, there's so many great beers across the Midwest and, and I think people enjoyed that. I don't, I don't foresee that happening. I think you'll see beer prices increase or fluctuate just as you do in the economy. Have you guys considered tubing as part of an expansion? So Sylvan Hill is, is located here in Wausau. They offer tubing. Um, having been a part of a resort that offers tubing, <laughs> um, I think that there's plenty of it out there in the state of Wisconsin. I can't say that it hasn't been discussed here. Mm -hmm. um, right now though, I don't know where I would put tubing without taking away some beginner terrain. Um, and maybe down the line that does become something if we get more beginner terrain in the West, but it's not really a part of our overall plans within the expansion. Would there be an option for a dual season pass that would include mountain biking and skiing? Yeah, I do think that there's options like that. Um, there, there are models out there um, across the industry. You know, Killington comes to mind and Mammoth, basically a season pass that goes uh, an annual program. Yeah. Um, so I do think that there's opportunities like that. And yeah, new products would certainly come out um, if we had mountain biking and other and other activities at the hill that are in the off season or the summer season. Should there be any concern about having two base areas in which would open first as far as operations from snowmaking standpoint? That's a good question. Um, I don't think there should be any concerns about it. You know, Granite Peak as it is right now, you know, Comet is our main, our hub. And I think we we will continue to always operate off of that. That's where our two, you know, Sundance and historic chalets are. I don't foresee any any lodge being any bigger. I mean, I can't really say, but I mean, Sundance is a pretty big chalet. So I would expect us to run off of the six pack as being our primary. And then, yeah, you, down the line, there's definitely going to be some strategy as to how to go about um, operations. You know, I wouldn't want to open up one side and not have a connector between the two, you know, mm -hmm. so that that comes into play. You know, now you talk about the West and how that it's not the West anymore. It's kind yeah. of the middle, <laughs> um, you know, so so names changes and everything goes on like that. So.
Um, how would you address those against any expansion? Do you think uh, this would be a good thing for Wausau? Yeah, I think it's going to be a great thing. You know, I, I think that there are some really cool stuff that are happening in Wausau, like demolition of the mall that's going on is, is offering up a really cool um, conceptual design of a, of a beautiful downtown green space that's going to give um, Wausau um, this beautiful park and opportunities for concerts and and really expand upon the, the businesses that are down there. And I think that this opportunity for Granite Peak and Rib Mountain gives more activities for this area to really become a hub for outdoor adventure. You know, we we're kind of like the gateway to the north area, um, mm -hmm. you know, some lakes and and a lot of folks, um, you know, kind of continue on past us. And I think that we can offer up that opportunity for people who are coming up from, say, down south um, to spend a day or two at Wasa and then head up north for their vacation. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a great, great opportunity for the summertime special. Uh, do you see any ski in, ski out accommodations as part of this expansion in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that there's opportunities along those lines. You know, there, there are some land access points that would need to be um, added in to the, mm -hmm. the overall plan, but I, I think that that um, we have some ski in, ski out places right now off of uh, this uh, sunset mm -hmm. for a few folks that are kind of right off the Rib Mountain golf course there. Um, so I do think that that will be down the line, um, something that, that Rib Mountain and Granite Peak would look at. But right now, I think we're more focusing on the recreation right. side of things and then the amenities will kind of come second. All right. And then lastly, what can people do to support this expansion effort beyond just spending more money at the resort? Um, I think really sharing the information. Um, I find social media to be a great resource for not only advertising, but really mm -hmm. sharing of information. And I think it's important that if folks want to get more support behind whichever option that they are going for. Facebook, social media, Instagram, Twitter, those are great ways to to, to basically campaign for how it, it works. So um, I ask folks that they share it on their Facebook page um, to their friends and anybody else that might be interested in visiting Wausau or Granite Peak in the future, because this is what it could look like. Well, uh, Greg, thank you so much for taking the time to talk through the expansion and obviously last season, some of these stuff that's going on from the off season uh, perspective as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it becomes a reality. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Thanks for the time and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Greg. Right, thanks, buddy. Bye. Special thanks to Greg for taking the time to chat with me. And if you want to support the expansion at Granite Peak, be sure to submit your feedback to the Wisconsin DNR before July 14th. I hope all of you guys have a great week, pray for snow, and I'll see you guys out there.